Key and Peel, A.A. Ron. Well, you know, like sometimes, you know, me being a L.A. Charger fan, it feels like I you just, oh, wait, hold on. I can't get used to that. L.A. I am a. Los Angeles. I am a. Inglewood. Let me just say this publicly. I'm a former San Diego Chargers fan. I'm a current San Diego I Chargers just, fan. That's my I, I, fantasy I football a, team name, San Diego. Time, I have a hard time hearing Los Angeles associated with Chargers. Anyway, excuse my <laughs> interruption. I just had to get that in. You could I interrupt that, me every time. I had time. to get that off my chest. You know what? You could get that off your chest every time because – I'm right here with you. So your point being. Excuse, my point being, my you know, as a Charger fan, I just want the medical staff every year to get questioned because it seems like we're always hurt. Yeah. But it goes beyond that. Sometimes you just get horrible injury luck. And for the Bears this year, absolutely atrocious injury luck. Yeah. Every week they got somebody hurt. And this this time, it's been the best defensive player on the field tonight. Eduardo Martinez, six tackles in just the first half. He's been everywhere for the Bears. 29 tackles this year for the junior defensive lineman, and he's out of the game right now. Wow, he, uh, he is definitely looking. And when the training staff has to carry you, both of them like that, yeah, that that's a serious injury. That, that's not a good-looking uh, sign at all. So hopefully he'll, he'll get a chance to come back in the second half. They have his legs stretched out and all the trainers paying attention to him. Oh, it this hit. Punt hit a Lancer. Hit a Lancer. So that isn't technically a fumble, still a solid punt of 28 yards. The Bears will set up shop at a round midfield. Very good field position with 418 remaining here in the first half of play. So Eduardo Martinez, the guy who was hurt, they're not stretching out his leg. It looked on the angle. There's so many trainers there. It's hard to even get a look. I was hoping they'd stretch out his calf because that'd be cramps. But it looks a little more serious than that. Like it appears maybe an ankle injury. That That is my best guess. That would be a tough one. Bears have 418 left in the half. Up by two scores. Inside run for Henderson who runs right over his own player and picks up about five. Number seven, senior Stephen Lobato makes the stop, his fourth. Only fourth carry of the night here for Anderson, which is kind of surprising. I thought we'd see a little bit more action out of him on the ground. Tejon Henderson has come into the game with an average of about nine carries a game and five yards per run. He's been a real workhorse for the Bears this season. A poly offense, which ranks um, third in the Sun Belt in scoring this year. Play fake, and here is the sophomore Dominguez, and he is nailed for a loss. That might have even been helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact as Lobato wallops the quarterback. It's going to be a loss for about a yard on that carry. My apologies, Jeremiah Luna, not Ryan Dominguez, on the call on that play. Dominguez back in. Nevertheless, that was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Not intentional, but still... One I'm sure Luna will feel tomorrow. Yeah, it does happen. There's just some times where you just can't avoid that contact. A big moment of the first half here. Lakeside has all of its timeouts and could get the ball back if they deliver a third down stop. Very wisely taken, just as you say that, Nick. Pauly uses its second of three timeouts in the first half. Stops the clock, just under three minutes to play. A reminder coming up at the half, we'll have scores, news, highlights, and much more at the half from beautiful Riverside TV. Let's check out what the two teams have accomplished this year. Lakeside comes in three and four this year with their wins against Valley View and a couple of road victories. In fact, they're better at home than on the road this year. Their victories at Arlington, very close to here, and at San Fernando. So this is a team that's comfortable on the road. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that that does not seem to phase this squad at all. I mean, they've, they've contended pretty well here in this first half. A couple of mistakes have been the Achilles heel. There's a look at the Lancers. They took that long bus ride. They, they made a day out of it, by yeah. the way, the head coach, James Seidler. And, um, you know, they got accustomed to the university out there, too, and really a cool 
cool coach to, to play for. Yeah, they, they gave a great opportunity for the kids to take a look at what college life was all about as they took that trip up into the San Fernando Valley. So they, they made it a very educational experience as yes. well. Yes, right in the area of CSUN. Well, flag on the play. It's a false start. Meanwhile, for the Bears, they come in 3-5 and five this year. Likewise, they knocked out Arlington, also have wins against Sultana and Rancho Christian. All three of their wins are at home this season. The problem for them has been an 0-3 start to their season on the road. And next week after the bye, they'll visit Vista Del Lago for the season finale. So we'll see if the Bears can take the show on the road to the Ravens Friday, October 28th. It's amazing that this season is getting that much closer to wrapping up, and we'll start uh, expecting to see what the matchups will be on Selection Sunday. Just insane. Just insane stuff. <laughs> right? You wait all year for the season to start, and it all comes down to a couple of Friday nights. Dominguez oh, man. is sacked again. Wow. Christian Maldonado Four, takes him down. Dominguez. Also give credit to Michael Michael Reams on the stop. 6'3", 285. Not a bad height weight combo. That is a good size kid. Now Lakeside has plenty of great athletes. The Lancers also, this is their best GPA year in James Seedler history with uh, plenty of players over 3'5", plenty of players over 4'0 GPA. Yeah, I think he, I believe he mentioned it was uh, Evan Christensen who has a 4.2. Wow. In fact, there's a few schools that want him or want him to come to the campus, not necessarily to play football, <laughs> but just to bring your smarts with you. Yeah, Ivy Leaguers. That's not great. that schools in California can't bring it in the academic area. But nothing like those Ivy League schools. No, it's great to see that uh, the, the kids are just as committed to the classroom as they are to the gridiron. And that makes coaching that much easier. When you got guys with that high a GPA, I mean, they're almost co-coaches on the field. And, you know, he's felt that way throughout the year. Lancers are three and four. Bears are three and five. A big football game for the two schools as they vie for final playoff spots in the CIF Southern Section. Selection Sunday is coming up later this month. Wow, big rush. And he will get the punt away. It's a good one for the Bears. That'll go down as a 51-yard punt down at the Lakeside 9-yard line. Nice. 226 left in the half, 13-3 Bears. Yeah, nice way to back up the Lancers to give them a long field to have to work with with just under two and a half remaining in the first half here. Field goal kicking party between these two schools with two of the best kickers in the area. Alicia Deganefe makes from 29 and 43, and Yeps from 30. Those are the field goals in the first half, and of course Dominguez with the highlight of the half Fires a 31-yard touchdown to Tejon Henderson to extend the Bear lead to 10. And there's your scoring summary through two quarters. If the Lancers want to add to the points, they'll need a 91-yard drive. They have 226 to do it and all of their timeouts. First and 10. And they'll go to the ground, and that run's going nowhere. Norwood is stuffed up front from big number 50, Joseph Salazar, just his second tackle of the season. The Lancers are going to get to a point where I think they're going to get backed into a corner where they will have to throw the football here. Our end zone angle with our award-winning crew, Riverside TV, bringing you all the action, all the angles, and the excitement here on King High School on Riverside TV. Once again, a flex game thanks yes. to our viewing audience who essentially chose tonight's game that we should cover for the week. And I believe we have that same setup for next week as well. Yes, that's next week's schedule, of course, to be determined through their playing. Temesco Canyon, JW North is our other Riverside game. How about a doubleheader again on a Friday night in Riverside? From third in Chicago, Titans and Huskies. 14-14 was our last score update. And late in the first half, uh, we uh, score is still 14-14, 2.19 to go in the first half of that one. Nick Rice, Jerry Barra in this ball game, 13-3 Bears. 
Pauley will have a bye after this game and their season finale is in two weeks against Vista Del Lago. Lancers play Vista Del Lago next, then Paloma Valley in the finale in two weeks. Norwood to the 10. And he takes a shot on the sideline near the 20 yard line. Number 27, Deshaun Norwood. That's enough for a first down. Seven, oh, we got a holding call, unfortunately. Yep, bring it back. So that'll nullify that. That's, that's a shame. Like I said, I think the Lancers are going to have to get uh, an eye, the thought of, of throwing the football when they're this far down the field here. Rene Maldonado this year is completing 48% of his throws for 481 yards, two touchdowns and four interceptions. Has five more rushing scores this year, does the senior quarterback. Holding against the Lancers. Senior night here from King High School, home of the Pauley Bears. Bears are a winning football team at home, but just 0-3 on the road. Hernandez heads outside, gets by Luna. He's at the 10 and is tripped up just short of the 15 by the Bears senior, Ben Madour. Hernandez, tackled by number seven, Ben Madour. Well, time clock is not working in favor of the Lancers here. But it might be for the Bears. They yeah. make the stop and, yeah. you know, they might feel compelled to burn a timeout. Both teams have one clock stoppage left. It should be noted the Lancers do receive the opening kickoff of the second half. So there is the stop and is a timeout coming up. Be worth thinking about. Number six, Christian Reed. Assistant coaches are screaming on the sideline, but not for a timeout, just, just for the punt team. This yeah. is interesting why the Bears wouldn't elect to use a timeout. Well, but by the time this gets booted off here, they should have a little bit of time to play with. A little bit, but they'd have more if yeah. they used the timeout. Yeah, it sure would have been. So the Lancers will chew up as much clock as they can. Boy, and they are certainly doing that. Stopped at 38.2. Yeah, you're right, Nick. You know, if they had taken a timeout, the clock Lakeside. would have, the clock would have been stopped at with a minute 12 left. Yeah. Wow. And, okay. you know, of course, you wouldn't have a timeout after you get the ball, Correct. but yeah. you're not going to be using 40 seconds to take a play. So, you know, that's the funny thing, you know, watching NFL football, too. I feel like there should be a show out there, you know, um, you're welcome in advance. A show out there that just talks about two-minute situations, you know, because <laughs> there's got to be some sort of arrogant meathead like me who says, I know better than these coaches and what, what to do, late-game situations. But I got to say. I like I, that show. Yeah, I think I, that'd I, be pretty let, interesting. Let's, let's pitch that to. Um, Chargers would be on there every week, by the way. <laughs> yeah. They're always going for it. Fourth down of their own 10-yard line. Let's pitch it to ESPN and see if they go for it. Here's the punts. Madur calls it off, and the ball bounces to about the 40-yard line with 32.4 seconds left in the half. Yeah, that should give them some time to play with. I'm going to guess Dominguez is going to put the ball in the air a couple times, just kind of test things out. Brian Dominguez came into the game with just 108 yards passing on the year. He has more than that in today's game. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how he's been able to step up and really make a difference here offensively for Pauley. William Cloak goes down, and rarely do you see a backup quarterback with the moxie of a starter. He comes right in. He isn't checking it down. He's trying to beat you downfield. And he came an inch away from a second touchdown, which resulted in a field goal to end the drive. We'll see if he can find the end zone again. Dominguez fakes to Hernandez, dumps it off into the flat for the Bears' Larry Morris. And he is hammered with what appears to be a towel or something flew off as soon as he uh, fell down. Yeah, they're in hurry-up mode because the clock is still running here. 
Second stop of the ball game for cover man Lawrence Williams. 12 seconds left in the half. And uh, the clock has stopped at 11.1. You do have a good kicker, though. Yeah, they do. So one quick play and a timeout. Yeah, if they can get it just a little further down the road here, that'll give it uh, a little bit of decent range here. Yeah, Steganeve just made a 43-yard field goal with room to spare. This would be from 49. With the running of Tejan Henderson, I wouldn't be shocked if they uh, go to the ground here. Very possible. They may want to give him a pretty good uh, spot and placement here and call that timeout. Third and short. 11 seconds left in the half, and the Bears go pass. Dominguez shoots it deep, and oh, that pass picked is off. picked off. Wow, what a shame. Intercepted by, if I'm not mistaken, Adrian Olorsaba. Yes. Fresh off a big hit in the first quarter. He has a big interception in the second. Five seconds left, and that'll thwart any opportunity for late Bears points. You know, they didn't call a timeout, and there I feel like running the ball would have been a better idea. Yeah, it would have been a, a something to think about, something to consider. But, again, here we are. We're, uh, we're doing the Monday mor morning uh, coaching. Uh, yep, Monday morning quarterback on a Friday. Yes, sir. So we'll, we'll break down all of that and our thoughts, stats, highlights, stories, you name it. We got it. Riverside we TV we at the half. Here. We got you covered, folks. Final play of the half, barring a penalty. About a seven, eight-yard gain in a cloud of dust. Make that a <laughs> ten-yard gain. How push. about fifteen? <laughs> <laughs> that is that is quite the push. I haven't quite seen anything like that. So, tackle from Micah Aaron. End of the first half. Our score is thirteen to three. Polly, the player of the half, has to be of all people the field goal kicker. Alicia Adeganefe, two long distance kicks, one from 29, one from 43. He's been fantastic on kickoffs. I mean, this guy did it all in the first half. Yeah, he's been pretty spectacular to watch as a high school place kicker because you normally don't see that type of action at this level. But, Incredible uh, a, stuff. A pretty good first half for the Bears. I know there was a little bit of faux pas here and there. Same thing with the Lancers, unfortunately, not able to, to get something into the end zone. You know, this is yet another game that appears to come right down to the wire. Join us for the second half. We'll step aside for a few. Then it's the halftime intermission and the stats and all the stuff promised. We're here at the end of two. Pauly leads Lakeside 13-3. to We'll be back right after this. California leads the nation in railroad trespass-related fatalities. In 2021, there were 243 trespass casualties in California. We can all help reduce trespass-related incidents even further if we never trespass on railroad property for any reason. That means no biking or walking near tracks. Railroad property is private property. The only safe place to cross train tracks is at a designated crossing. September is Rail Safety Month. Please do your part. And whenever you see tracks, always think train. Live local. Help support your favorite businesses with the Shop Riverside Community Card. With over 200 Riverside businesses giving exclusive discounts and offers to community card holders, there's something for everyone. Participating organizations sell these cards for only $15 each, with $10 going straight back to the organization itself, making the Shop Riverside Community Card a fantastic way to support your favorite local group. For more information about the Shop Riverside Community Card and to find participating businesses, please visit shopriversidenow.com. And don't forget to live local. Shop Riverside. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD for a traffic accident with injuries. In 1234, main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. 431. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive Code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull 
So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. California leads the nation in railroad trespass-related fatalities. In 2021, there were 243 trespass casualties in California. Trespassing is one of the most challenging safety issues plaguing California's railroad corridors. In Riverside County alone, there were 19 trespass-related casualties last year. But the positive news is those numbers have dropped over the years because of the efforts of California Operation Lifesaver and partnering agencies like RCTC and Metrolink. We can all help reduce trespass-related incidents even further if we never trespass on railroad property for any reason. That means no biking or walking near tracks. Railroad property is private property. The only safe place to cross train tracks is at a designated crossing. September is Rail Safety Month, so please do your part. And whenever you see tracks, always think train. And stay off, stay away, stay safe. My name is Melissa Olmos, and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the city of Riverside, and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookies, the residents call to the city to be serviced, and these items is large furniture, mattress, and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year, and these items, I put it in the back of the packer, and the packer crashes and compact this item so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residence houses, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I tried to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. first building of a little free pantry. We are building a little free pantry in our community. It will be one of the 26 throughout Riverside that will help fill the gaps of food scarcity here in Riverside. Data is telling us now that one in six families are hungry. It's about 44% of adults and about 50% of children uh, that are hungry here within uh, our own neighborhood, in our own backyard. Because of the pandemic, there's a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of families in need, and we hope that this will act as a bridge until families are able to get the food that they need. I think that there are always those times where uh, we are living paycheck to paycheck, and we need just a few cans of something to get us by. 
So these little pantries will serve in that capacity and we're really excited to see something that will help families in need. And this has been a wonderful collaboration with the Riverside Mutual Aid Network, IEHP, here at Sandals Church and the city of Riverside. So this has been a fantastic opportunity for community members to step up and to fill a real void in our city, which is food insecurity. So the idea is, is that if you, that one of these free little pantries in your neighborhood, you could stock it as frequently or as infrequently as you want to. And the idea behind it is that when people have extra food, it doesn't go to waste. These pantries are just kind of the first step, right? For reintroducing neighbors back to each other, getting folks involved in taking care of each other again, and just strengthening those community bonds that Riverside is so known for. Um, because things like food drives and food distributions, they're really good, but they only help folks in that moment of need. And we wanted to create something that would continue giving back five, 10, 15 years from now, uh, and really allow the community to get back into taking care of each other, um, instead of maybe relying on, you know, just government or nonprofit structures to kind of take care of them. If others want to follow suit, they can apply at riversideca.gov slash cares is an application, or they can email us at neighbor at riversideca.gov to receive an application to host a little free pantry in their neighborhood. California leads the nation in railroad trespass related fatalities. In 2021, there were 243 trespass casualties in California. We can all help reduce trespass related incidents even further if we never trespass on railroad property for any reason. That means no biking or walking near tracks. Railroad property is private property. The only safe place to cross train tracks is at a designated crossing. September is Rail Safety Month. Please do your part. And whenever you see tracks, always think train. Live local. Help support your favorite businesses with the Shop Riverside Community Card. With over 200 Riverside businesses giving exclusive discounts and offers to community card holders, there's something for everyone. Participating organizations sell these cards for only $15 each, with $10 going straight back to the organization itself making the Shop Riverside Community Card a fantastic way to support your favorite local group. For more information about the Shop Riverside Community Card and to find participating businesses, please visit shopriversidenow.com. And don't forget to live local. Shop Riverside. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD for a traffic accident with injuries. 1234 main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive Code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. California leads the nation in railroad trespass related fatalities. In 2021, there were 243 trespass casualties in California. Trespassing is one of the most challenging safety issues plaguing California's railroad corridors. In Riverside County alone, there were 19 trespass related casualties last year. But the positive news is those numbers have dropped over the years because of the efforts of California Operation Lifesaver and partnering agencies like RCTC and Metrolink. We can all help reduce trespass related incidents even further if we never trespass on railroad property for any reason. That means no biking or walking near tracks. Railroad property is private property. The only safe place to cross train tracks is at a designated crossing. September is Rail Safety Month. 
So please do your part. And whenever you see tracks, always think train. And stay off, stay away, stay safe. My name is Melissa Olmos, and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the city of Riverside, and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookings, the residents call to the city to be serviced, and these items is large furniture, mattress, and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year, and these items, I put it in the back of the packer, and the packer crashes and compact these items so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream it was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residence houses, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I try to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. Today is our very first building of a little free pantry. We are building a little free pantry in our community. It will be one of the 26 throughout Riverside that will help fill the gaps of food scarcity here in Riverside. Data is telling us now that one in six families are hungry. It's about 44% of adults and about 50% of children uh, that are hungry here within uh, our own neighborhood, in our own backyard. Because of the pandemic, there's a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of families in need, and we hope that this will act as a bridge until families are able to get the food that they need. I think that there are always those times where uh, we are living paycheck to paycheck, and we need just a few cans of something to get us by. So these little pantries will serve in that capacity, and we're really excited to see something that will help families in need. And this has been a wonderful collaboration with the Riverside Mutual Aid Network, IEHP, here at Sandals Church, and the city of Riverside. So this has been a fantastic opportunity for community members to step up and to fill a real void in our city, which is food insecurity. So the idea is, is that if you, that one of these free little pantries is in your neighborhood, you could stock it as frequently or as infrequently as you want to. And the idea behind it is that when people have extra food, it doesn't go to waste. These pantries are just kind of the first step, right? For reintroducing neighbors back to each other, getting folks involved in taking care of each other again, and just strengthening those community bonds that Riverside is so known for. Um, because things like food drives and food distributions, they're really good, but they only help folks in that moment of need. And we wanted to create something that would continue giving back five, 10, 15 years from now, uh, and really allow the community to get back into taking care of each other, um, instead of maybe relying on, you know, just government or nonprofit structures to kind of take care of them. If others want to follow suit, they can apply 
at riversideca.gov slash cares is an application, or they can email us at neighbor at riversideca.gov to receive an application to host a little free pantry in their neighborhood. Welcome back to King High School in Riverside, the community of Woodcrest, where we played two quarters, and our score at the half is 13 to three, Pauly Bears in front. Interesting first half. You know, I think Pauly did what they needed to do to, to get things going offensively. I'm sure John Rice would like to have a little bit more efficiency in some aspects uh, of the first half, but a, a lead of 13 to three is fairly respectable. On the flip side, the Lancers just stalled out at uh, yeah. crucial times and unfortunately could not seal and finish the deal. Yeah, plenty of promising drives at no points to show for it. Quickly, let's take a deep dive across the CIF Southern section. Uh, from Harupa Valley yesterday, the Notre Vista Braves are right up there at the top of the River Valley League and they won again. 7-1 Braves fresh off a 30-20 road win against the Patriot Warriors. At the end of one from Riverside at Arlington High School, the Ramona Rams lead the Arlington Lions 21 to nothing. Yikes. A big start for the Rams who are trying to match Notre Vista in the River Valley League. For Moreno Valley, the Moreno Valley Vikings are down to the Vista del Lago Ravens at the half 29 to 16. Oh, big baby. return to begin the second half. Oh man. Across the 50 from Lawrence Williams. And he's finally down. Forward progress stop to the 30-yard line on a sensational return from Williams and exactly what the doctor ordered to begin the half. Absolutely. Was just going to say that, Nick. If there was any little spark that the Lancers needed, that was it. They just need to seal the deal and get it into the end zone. Right. Return of 65. And to wrap up our scores from across the league, on the other Riverside TV game of our doubleheader tonight, J.W. North and Temesco Canyon are tied at 14 at the half. Yeah, pretty good contest on that side of town. Two quarters complete, of course, the Bears lead 13 to three. Pauly with two field goals from Aloshua Deganefe. Quarterback sneak, and Fuentes wraps up Rene Maldonado after a short gain. You know, this is the first team I've seen in years that regularly does quarterback sneaks. Unfortunately, they get caught for motion, so that'll set them back. So that will go no place. Yep, so much for that. And coming up tomorrow on Riverside TV, just a reminder, the Fontana Steelers visit the Notre Dame Titans. Fo Steelers high. at Titans, not from Nashville. That game's in Riverside. Fo high, one of the, back in the 80s. Here I, <laughs> here I go back in time again. That was one of the major teams here in the Inland Empire. Norwood crawls ahead to about the 30-yard line for a short gain. And then now Ramona and Norda Vista are stealing the shine from Fontana, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I remember back in the day, here I am going to reminisce again. I mean, you, you had games with Edison. Oh, no, excuse me, not Edison. But um, Fontana. Okay. And we'll go after this play here. Norwood gallops to about the 26-yard line. A hard-nosed running performance today from Norwood. Gain of about three. Yeah, there was there was plenty of times where Fontana High School games seven, would draw ben upwards of 20,000 people. Wow. Because they were that dominant of a team back in the day. I mean, even Bosco and Modern Day aren't pulling numbers like that. They, they, they might bring in about five to 8,000 for a championship game. First carry of the day for the Lancers, Christian Maldonado, who is their bell cow throughout most of the season. That's a gain of a couple, uh, but they'll be faced with a fourth down. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen that much of him on any of the calls so far. I think they're going to have to call upon his uh, his duties here in the second half. To Christian, get right, Maldonado brought in due to the injuries to the top two running backs, 
dominated the league this season. He gets the call again, follows his blocks, and has the first down. We talked to the coach, James Seidler, before the game. Christian Maldonado earned an opportunity to receive more playing time. It's amazing. You know, that was the joking question I had to him. It's like, okay, your starters are back in. Should Maldonado still be the starter? It seems like he's the second-half starter for him. As Stokely wraps up Maldonado quickly, his numbers are incredible. 111 carries for 846 yards and four touchdowns. 7.6 yards a carry this year for Maldonado. Yeah, I think you and I just had that look of shock when he told us that that was his third string running back. Right. He's a junior, so next year he is scheduled to be their first stringer as the top two are seniors. Maldonado with no runner behind him, sneaks again and spins to about the 14-yard line, setting up a third and short. Kind of the fourth time we've seen Rene Maldonado four, call Rene his Maldonado. own number. number nice pickup, though, Ball close about four yards on the carry. The eighth tackle of the game from senior Felix Fuentes matching his total for the season. That's a story we've seen on the Lancer front as well. As Rene Maldonado has done a fantastic job on the ground. Critical third down in the middle of a great drive sparked by the long return from Lawrence Williams from the 14. Maldonado, who has yet to complete a pass today, he's looking end zone, throws a jump ball in the back line, and it's knocked away by Henderson. Incomplete. Nice. Yeah, nice work by Henderson because that was up just kind of like a, an injured duck. Yep. That's a good reference. And that ball fluttered for number three. Uh, yes, Kenneth Powell, the senior receiver. So another field goal attempt here for the Lancers. As mentioned in the first half, so many promising Lancer drives have ended with no points. They settle for the field goal, and that kick is good. Got it. 13 to 6. You know, in essence, this kind of puts them back into the ball game here, Nick. I mean, yes. there's still plenty of time. They're only trailing by one score, but we do have a, a Lancer down on the field, unfortunately. Well, who knew coming into this heavyweight bout, playoffs are on the line here, that we'd be talking about the field goal kicking and the kickoff teams. But it may come down to that. I mean, yes. this game might be decided by a kick. We've got a battle of kickers today. Angelo Morris is two for two, makes of 29 and 30. And Alishua Dekanefe makes of 29 and 43, is likewise two for two today. And that has been the scoring in this one. The difference, as we see an injured Lancer, was the Ryan Dominguez 31-yard touchdown to Tejan Henderson. Still can't see a number on our injured Lakeside player right now, but it looks like they got him moving around a little bit, which is good. One of the linemen, it appears, down. We'll get a name and number momentarily. So let's check out some of the numbers for the first half of this game. Lancer tailback Deshaun Norwood, a healthy 4.7 yard per carry average, 14 rushes for 66 yards, a real workhorse for this offense. Yeah, he was definitely looking pretty good in the first half. But like uh, you and I mentioned, I think we need to call it, or they need to call on Maldonado maybe a little bit more here in right. the second half. Meanwhile, for uh, Pauley High School, their lead uh, offensive threat, of course, quarterback Ryan Dominguez was pretty good, but Tejon Henderson had a do-it-all first half. He also uh, tacked on a tackle and a pass breakup, but in the first half, over a first down a carry and over 20 yards a catch, he was a big threat for that offense. Yeah, four carries for 53 yards and four receptions for 85. The injured Lancer, number 15, Max Halterman. So Tejon Henderson over 100 yards from scrimmage in the first half. And if it wasn't for the field goal kicking, I'd say he absolutely was the best player on the field and uh, grabbed the only touchdown of the game with 130 left in the first quarter. Now, here's an interesting thought. Here's here's interesting thought of the night. Okay. How about a non-side Oh, throw? of course. I always got to oh, come up with course. that. Of course. You should have given me a minute. Yes. Where I could come up with your crazy, yeah, goofy you know strategy. I, I love my onside kicks. Well, Squib almost. kick. How about that? Almost. 
And I'd say that's probably the worst idea because Paulie has the ball in great field position. Yeah, yeah. You know, the dangerous return man, of course, the Bears have one too, but Lawrence Williams is the big threat. Uh, ball spotted at the 42-yard line. So, you know, onside kicks is an interesting idea, Jr. And I, I do believe that teams need to do that more. I, I think so. I think when you're in a situation like this, you're kind of backed up on the scoreboard. you got to start pulling out of the bag of tricks. But I do think that's a great first-half strategy. So much is on the line. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean... I do know this, you know, speaking of analytics, I do know that teams, no matter what, I believe they should go for fourth down more than they do. Number and five, and I think James teams are starting to get that. Five, you know, old school football Williams. wasn't quite as aggressive as it is now, but I do believe that there still is this feeling that late in a ball game, you need to take the points versus going for, you know, the win. Yeah. We'll see how they play this in the fourth quarter. But, I, but you know, we talked about in the first half, we felt like the Bears should have taken a timeout, and then they should have run the ball to set up field goal range, and we'll see if that ends up hurting them later in the game. Henderson, fresh off a 53-yard performance in the first half, 53 yards on four carries, Number five, is spilled by Dakota Pearson after a short game. Enough to move the sticks on just his fifth run of the game, and considering his numbers and considering how good he's looked tonight, I'd say he might be the guy they need to lean on a little more in the second half. I think so. In terms of ball control and, and controlling the time clock, that might be the thing for, for him to think about here. Henderson flanks Dominguez in the backfield, but they bring Madure in motion. It's a jet sweep for the receiver, cuts it back, gets a block from his quarterback, and is spun at around the 40-yard line by Evan Christensen, that highly touted senior offensive and defensive lineman with his first stop of the game. Boy, that was a great way to make lemonade out of lemon because he went nowhere taking that ball to the left. You'll see him stop right here. Nice reverse of direction. And then taking it upfield for the gain of about seven on the carry. You know, not a horrible block from the quarterback. Certainly no... Uh, Mike Allstott as a pulling guard, but still, you know, we've seen quarterbacks do a lot less helping Ben Madura on that play. Second and short, Dominguez looks and checks it down, and that is complete to Lejon Johnson. A rare catch for the junior receiver, only his eighth of the season, and that is right around the marker. They'll rule him about, wow, not a great spot, two yeah. yards short. It looked like he got it. It was pretty tight, and he might have taken a step backwards, though. But yeah, they they did not give him the forward progress. Right, path. not favorable, certainly. Key potential stop here for the Lancers. Midway through the third quarter, Lakeside's opening drive of the half ended with a field goal. This is the first Bears drive of the second oh. half. Early moving up front, false start on. Number 66, we don't know who that is, but we do know that he jumped early. Yeah, again, we don't have a name to correspond with a number. Wow, but midway through the third quarter, it's a critical false start. You know, both of these teams have done a good job avoiding the penalties tonight. Yeah, four. there's four flags so far here for Pauly. Most of them just the early movement variety. Now the Bears had 12 men on the field. Luckily for them, no penalty. Third down and seven, Pauly. Dominguez fakes to Henderson. He's looking deep, hit as he throws. He's got Madura at the 20. He slips a tackle and is down to the five. Wow. <laughs> 39-yard hookup to Ben Madura. First and goal, Pauly. Lawrence Williams makes the stop, his fourth of the game. 
This guy is pretty good. Seven for nine for 161 yards and a touchdown today. Ryan Dominguez of the Bears. Yeah, Maduro, three catches and two of those over 30 yards apiece. And he was a foot away from a touchdown in the first half. Let's check out that throw again from Dominguez. This is a big league throw right here, JR. Yeah, nice touch. Wow. Right, right on the run. Because he was covered from uh, by Williams. Jumbo package for the Bears, and they'll go to the run. Flag has been down as the Lancers were all over it. Tackle for loss from junior Christian Maldonado. Yeah, it looks like we got a legal motion here. Illegal shift against the Bears. So he is going to stay with the team, scheduled to Ryan Dominguez, for another two years. There's a lot of great quarterbacks in this city. Orange Vista's quarterback, we saw him a couple of weeks oh, ago. Yeah. He's pretty freshman. good. He's Just a freshman. freshman but... This guy is pretty good, too. You know, William Cloak was, was uh, you know, second best passer in the Sun Belt, 988 yards this year. So he put up some great numbers. But this guy, he might not be better than Cloak right now, but by the time he's a senior, I wouldn't be shocked if he's torching this whole league. Yeah, if you get him time to develop. You know, they should have been flagged with that on the previous play, but illegal uh, substitution. They, they got him on that again. Wow, so that backs the football up to the 20 here. So. Right. And this was a problem for them on that field goal drive in the first half. They had first and goal from the one and wound up losing 25 yards after that. Here they lose 10 yards. First and goal from the 20. Dominguez fires a slant and has his man, Armando Magana. Two catches today, giving him eight for the season. And they'll mark him down at around the eight-yard line. Oh, was that Lejean Johnson? No, that was Lejean Johnson. My apologies. Gain of 12. Setting up second and goal for the Bears. And as mentioned... Both of these teams, Pauly and Lakeside, have yet to score a touchdown in the red zone. Three field goals and no touchdowns for the two. A check down to the tailback that becomes a complete disaster. Rene Maldonado, the Lancer quarterback, drops him for a loss of about four. Yeah, great coverage here by the Lancers. To turn back the Bears about three, four, and maybe five yards on that one. Yeah, so the red zone woes have crippled these two offenses. Well, luckily for the Bears, it's not like Lakeside is scoring touchdowns anyways. 13-6 late in the third quarter. We did see a touchdown dropped from Magana in the first half in the red zone. Check down to Henderson. He already has one touchdown. He's at the 10, cuts back to the 5, and is standing up in the end zone. What a home run threat this guy is. Tajon Henderson, second touchdown of the night and his eighth of the year. Nice juke there by Henderson to get himself into the end zone and add more yardage to his tally here in the second half. What a special guy this is. Tajon Henderson. Over 150 yards from scrimmage now. And the extra point is good from Degan F.A. 20 to 6 Bears with 334 left in the third. Yeah, I'm sure Coach John Rice is pretty pleased with that performance in spite of the fact that some penalties almost cost him that capability to get into the end zone. Dejon Henderson, player of the game for the Bears. Let's check out his most recent run 14 yards on the grab and this while Dominguez has made a lot of great throws that's his easiest one of the night lateral throw so it could have been an issue if he had dropped it right and it doesn't look like he's running that hard that's what's so amazing about it he's jogging his way right past defenders very smooth and very fluid in this moment. yes that almost you know that that made Le'Veon Bell a great career uh, former Steeler this is a guy that that will patiently wait for those blocks to develop which can be so so vital for a football team speaking of vital plays wow. touchback <laughs> take an FA that is not his longest kickoff of the game either you know it almost looks uh, on the kickoff it looks like we're watching a college game here right a 
Well, Lakeside has all the big D1 recruits potentially for next year, but Degan Efe might be the best player at at the whole city of Riverside for what he does. I mean, for tonight, he is has been kind of the, the star of the game almost. I mean, we don't want to take away from Henderson and and Dominguez and what they've been able to accomplish offensively. Yeah, uh, Tom Kraft is looking somewhere with, you know, pulling off his binoculars. Hard nose run for wow. the first down here. You know, Tom Kraft, the head coach of RCC, the guy that, you know, has built a career on so many incredible players taking advantage of the city of Riverside. And uh, if if colleges don't want to look at this kid, you know, RCC would love to have oh, sure. a there lot are, of guys here on the field tonight. There are plenty of community colleges in the Southern California area that love to have a kicker of that magnitude. A couple of Norwood runs. 54, Nate Pargo. Nate Pargo, as you heard, with the stop. Third play of the drive. Another cloud of dust. This has been the theme of the game for the Lancers. Like a rugby scrum with a Deshaun Norwood run. 14 carries in the first half, almost a dozen already in the second half. Yeah, he's up to 17 total here. This time Maldonado gets the call and is wrapped up by Morris, his fourth stop. First down, Lakeside. Back to an up tempo situation here for Lakeside, which is probably a good idea. And this was what worked for him late in the second quarter. Two fullbacks and a no-huddle run. Here's Maldonado, and he falls forward to the Bears 45. Another Morris tackle, his fifth. Christian Maldonado, he's out of the game now, but he's such a physical runner that it seems as though this offense is even more explosive with him in the offense. Back to Norwood, gain of three, nailed by the Bears' Felix Fuentes, his ninth tackle of the game. First down, Lakeside. The Lancers have needed only a minute and 29 seconds to enter near field goal range. Norwood, pinballs to about the 38-yard line. Luna makes the stop. I'll give Norwood about 85 yards total here for the evening with 19 carries. And our story of the half was the Lancers' inability to capitalize on these long drives. They'll get near the red zone or into it and wind up with threes or even zeros. Has been kind of an issue for them throughout the season. They just cannot seem to finish off a drive. If they've been, if they've been able to do that, they would definitely be a lot further in their overall rankings and yes. their overall win-loss record. Win -loss record. Uh, they are second best in the Sun Belt in yards. So they're gaining a lot of yards, but they are the worst in points. Norwood is taken down at the 34. Felix Fuentes has 10 tackles today. And with that Eduardo Martinez injury in the first half, and if I'm not mistaken, he's out for the game. Eduardo Martinez. He is on the bench right now, helmet off. His cleats are on, but his helmet is off, so his might, night could be over. Certainly his, his uh, status in this drive is over. Maldonado, escorted by Henderson. But with him out, Felix Fuentes has filled the shoes admirably the defensive tackle and has had a great game for the Bears. You know, this high-powered offense, Fuentes has done a good job of limiting those runs. They're going to get forward progress, but just limiting the progress has been the key for them tonight. A cutback for Hernandez, and Luna meets him and drops him, ushered down to the 23. Good-looking drive so far. Number 24, Joel Hernandez, tackled by number six, Jeremiah Luna. Joe Hernandez is the deep back with Maldonado and Norwood in front of him. Hernandez cuts and gains four. Luna drops him after the four-yard scamper, and the fullback might have one more run here. We'll see if they get a playoff. It's in the midst of a sensational, methodical drive for the Lancers. Hernandez. 
Pulled down by Fuentes in the third quarter. With one second left, has been stopped with a timeout and an injury here. Oh man, we got another bear down on the turf. That might be, I saw a zero there, so. Whoever it is, I saw them clutching their left knee, which, yeah. is, which is not a good thing. Right, Nicholas Diaz maybe? I'd, I'd hate to get the guy wrong here. But anyways, the seconds left in the third quarter. It's such an intriguing offense, JR. They go no huddle, power run. You know, usually you see no huddle, five receivers. Exactly. It's, it's quite unusual in the way they run their offense. And you, the, the great thing about Pauly and what they've got to feel very good about is that that defense doesn't have time for substitutions, but they still, in the third quarter, are responding well to those no-huddle runs. Yeah, in comparison to other uh, highlights I've seen of Lakeside, they've been able to get into the secondary quite effectively and through some of their games, especially in the games that they've won so far in this year. But Pauly has definitely done a good job of keeping them kind of sedated a little bit and not picking up the big yardage gains. This is part of a doubleheader on Riverside TV. 235 is left in the third quarter. The Titans have taken the lead courtesy of a safety. Temesco Canyon 16, JW North 14. We'll give you up-to-moment updates on that game. JW North got off to an 0-4 start to the season. We were there for their incredible comeback. Olingi Pea scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Number 30 for the Bears. Yeah, we don't. We, it's one of those. We, we don't, don't know have who a he name is. With a number. But anyway, so. Yeah, that does not look good. They're, they're right. going to take him off the field, and he's definitely having an issue with his so J game. Right. J.W. North has won two of its last three games, and, you know, they're down two to Domesco Canyon. If they can figure out a way to win that game, the Huskies might go from 0-4 to quarter, playoff four, contention. What a, uh, you know, finish of the season for Opalani Vepulu and that JW North program. Well, I think North is definitely a team that doesn't quite reflect what its overall win-loss record is. It's a very good football team, but they played a very tough pre-league schedule, and now they're beginning to shine. Yeah, and it was that comeback win on Riverside TV that seems to have given that program a jolt, and... It is pretty shocking. You know, JW North set a school record for wins in a season last year, and then this season they got off to the 0-4 start. Granted, they had so many seniors graduate from last year, but still it's very shocking to see this team out of the playoff mix as of today. Yeah, a lot of key seniors left the program, move on to bigger and brighter things. So it's quite a young team, so, you know, you got to believe that somewhere down next year, next season, this team will be even stronger. So there are four teams for Ghazal Hassan, by the way. Check out his weekly uh, CIF Southern Section playoff predictions. Hassan, part of our excellent Riverside TV crew. Hernandez powers his way to the six-yard line of Pauly. But he predicts four teams will make the Riverside playoffs of the CIF Southern Section. Ramona, Notre Vista, King High School are the three. Another run for Hernandez down to the two-yard line. Let me get an update on that fourth team. But as of today, you know, that's who he feels the four teams will be, or, you know, three of the four will be. Got it. Touchdown. That's a touchdown for Lakeside in the opening minute of the second half. That's the fullback, Joe Hernandez, with his third touchdown run of the year. Yeah, he's already got 13 carries on, uh, on the night. And that extra point is good. 11.30 left in the ball game. 20 to 4, uh, 13 if you thought that Riverside TV had enough of those one-score nail-biting games. Well, <laughs> we may have another one. We, we might even have a better one than usual tonight. I mean, Lakeside's looking pretty good after that touchdown drive. We're kind of the nail Biting squad, it yes. seems like. You know? That's, those are the type of games we cover. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take yeah. those... Uh, 
I'll take those. I, I've heard quirky, weird. Uh, I've heard unusual, and I've heard uh, late game dramatic broadcast. But overall, you know? entertaining and, and entertaining. entertaining. This so is, you the, know, the games we've been able to cover so far have not been boring by any means this season, and that's all you can ask for. You know, I'm trying to find <laughs> Gasol's uh, CIF predictions, but I do remember three of the four. Okay, so the four should also include North. Ramona, Norta Vista, North, Hillcrest. He actually put King, here is a ball squibbed to the 35. He actually had King in last week, but he's, they, he now put King on the bubble, and he put Paulie on the bubble. Ah, so interesting. the Bears, according to him, and his predictions are usually pretty good. Uh, this this might be a game that could determine if they make the playoffs. Yeah. Because he was saying Vista Del Lago, considering you know how hurt they are and their their uh, non conference schedule, that might not be a big enough win. So this might be the week that determines the whole season for the Bears. I think the Bears definitely need to work on holding on to that time clock here, just keeping it on the ground. 20 to 13. Dominguez fakes the handoff and throws a slant that's a bit behind his intended target, Larry Morris, the senior receiver. Incomplete pass intended for number three, Larry Morris. First Defending attempt to Morris tonight. Seven, Lobato. And yes, as mentioned, Stephen Lobato, five tackles and one for loss, has now a pass breakup as he got a hand on it. 11.25 to go in the game. Dominguez, who was six for eight in the first half, has been even better in the second half. And for the Bears, even up by seven, this could be a passing situation. They bring in Madur, Morris, and Maldonado in the game. There's Morris on the tunnel screen. He shakes a tackle and picks up six, stacked up with a 41-yard line by the Lancers' Nicholas Chavez, the sophomore. First reception for three, Morris. Tackle on the play by number 13, Nicholas. Well, the Bears' top receiver, Ben Madur, has been terrific again today with nearly 100 yards receiving. He is fifth in the Sun Belt receiving yards and has been as advertised today. We'll see if Dominguez targets him on third down and six, or third down and four, rather. Also, Jack Lewis had a quiet game today. The sophomore at 6'2", nearly 200 pounds, is in the slot for Dominguez. He looks his way, but fires to Madur, who gets by the defense and is down to the 47. Lawrence Williams makes the stop. First down, Bears. Sixth reception on the night. Excuse me, fourth reception on the night for <laughs> We're doing math on the fly here, Looking folks. on the wrong thing here. Just a textbook pass. He's only a teenager. That's a sophomore in Ryan Dominguez on the hop to Madur for the first down. Great coverage, too, from the Lancers, but just a better catch. Fourth play of the Bear Drive from the Lancer 47-yard line. Henderson receives his first carry of the possession, and what a spectacular carry it is. Cut back to the oh, 30. Baby. It's a hat trick for Tejon Henderson all the way for a Bears touchdown. To the house. 47 yard spectacular run. That's why he has been the go-to guy offensively for the Bears all season long. They'll bring in Aloysia Daganefe for the extra point. Two for two already today, and his kick, it's a thing of beauty. That's good. Three for three on PATs, two for two on field goals. And with 10.09 left in the game, our score is 27-13. And for the Pauley Bears, that offense that has been hit and miss this season, they have hit their stride at the top time. And this was what head coach John Rice talked about 
all year. From the first time we saw them until now, they wanted to peak at the right time. They've got a quarterback that's peaking at the right time. Check out Tejon Henderson, fresh off the big throw from Dominguez. He makes everybody miss in his way to the end zone. A couple of great moves to make things happen and spring himself open for that touchdown run. He's had highlight plays all night, two touchdown runs and a touchdown catch, but that was his best as he weaves through everybody en route to the score. Degan F.A. time, folks. In for the kickoff is the senior field goal kicker and kickoff man with the run-up. This one is another line drive, but short, taken at the four-yard line by Williams. He gallops to the 30, gets a block, 40. 45-50, he slowed down, and Williams is finally marked out. Officials will spot him at about the 45. Boy, he just did not want to go down, and this will give some very decent field position here for the Lancers. Fresh off his 65-yard kickoff return earlier in the quarter. In the third quarter, Williams brings that one back 48. Wow, and just like that, we got another bear on the turf. This Are is not you good. serious? Yes, this is just not good. The Bears have had a horrible season with injuries. 44, Felix Fuentes, of course. <laughs> wow. So Martinez has an incredible first quarter at defensive tackle. His backup is now hurt, Felix Fuentes. And it's not one of those knickknacks. This one's a real deal. Trainers are all out there tending to Fuentes. Check out his numbers today. The junior defensive tackle in off the bench has 10 tackles. Wow. So far tonight. Wow. Well, I mean, for the Bears, you can see it on the sideline. They have, if you take out all the guys hurt on the bench, they don't have many players suited up to play defense. Yeah, as we previously mentioned, it is thankful that they have a bye this next coming weekend yeah. because that at least hopefully – will get some healing time for some of these players to possibly get themselves back to the final game of the season. In the Sun Belt standings, the Paloma Valley Wildcats are currently the league leaders at 2-0 in the conference and 6-2 and overall. With a Wildcat loss coupled with a Bears win, Pauly has an opportunity to jump into first place with a win in the finale. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how the season ends for the Bears, but they're right there in the Sun Belt driver's seat with a win and some help. Boy, when you tend to a player this long down in the field, that's not a good sign. Not a good sign. No. Paloma Valley will play, to, uh, they have a bye this week. Their next game is Saturday, home against Hemet before they tank on Lakeside in the finale, Paloma wow. Valley. Looks like another leg or knee injury here for a, one of the Bears. Felix Fuentes. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. I mean, he, he can't put any weight down on that right leg. Yeah. And they don't have a training table no, because it, that's already being it, tended to by another Bear. Exactly. <laughs> Christian Maldon, no, that's Deshaun Norwood. He takes a tumble to the 38-yard line, spilled by Dylan Deherty. So you're going to start hearing some unfamiliar names of the Bears very soon on defense because of all the injuries. Norwood slashes to the 35. Number 27, Deshaun Norwood. Already got 22 carries for Norwood on the night. Izzy Morales makes the stop. Rather, that last tackle from Maje Allen, not Deherty. Morris makes the stop on this one. Another strong run for the Lancers. And by this point of the game, it's a great idea to go with the hurry up. Absolutely. The time is now an issue here for Lakeside. Another run. Hernandez to the 25. And Johnson brings him down to the 21. First down. Lakeside. So far, Hernandez with 15 carries, so he's been quite the workhorse as well. Hernandez leaves the game and will be spelled by Maldonado. Christian Maldonado off the right tackle, immediately caught and dropped by Morris. 
And the clock keeps on moving. 27-13. Yeah, this is definitely a must-score situation here for the Lancers. Maldonado. As the Bears are trying to rip the ball out of his hands, he's down to the 13-yard line. Spilled by Adrian Perez Renteria. So Lakeside averages 69 yards per game passing. They might have zero yards per game passing tonight. The running game has been working for them all night. Maldonado takes a tumble to the eight-yard line, upended by Maje Allen. Number 11. Number 31. Christian Maldonado, tackled by number 11. Eight minutes Andre left in the game. It's a good use of time for the Lancers. They run the blitz. Maldonado nearly had the handoff taken from him. Number it's a short gain. Madur came flying into the backfield yeah, and he, nearly took the handoff. He, he almost had the handoff. <laughs> yeah. Sixth stop of the game for Morales. A run-heavy offense with another Maldonado run, and he is near the goal line, marked short at about the two. Madura makes the stop, his fifth of the game. Good luck to all the statisticians trying to figure out all these runs on Monday. Norwood's in the end zone. That's a two-yard run nice. for a Lancer touchdown. The Lancers go 47 yards in two minutes and 36 seconds. And with 7.27 left in the game, we've got a one-score game yet again. Yeah, they essentially have gotten themselves back into this ball game. We went from none of these teams could really do much in the first half offensively to in the second half we've seen zero punts. Looks like they're going to try the two-point conversion here. Here is a run from Rene Maldonado, oh, the it. brother of Christian Maldonado, who is key on that drive. Two-point conversion wow. is good. Four, we have ourselves a ball game here. The score, the Plenty of time in the time clock for both of these squads. It's the sort of two-point conversion that the Raiders wished that they had converted the other day on Sunday night. <laughs> or was that Monday night? I don't know. Anyways, Raiders lost to the Chiefs by one point. That's what I'm trying to say yeah, that's, as a Chargers that's, fan. That's the point. <laughs> All right, let's check out that run again. This is the two-point conversion from Maldonado. No, sorry. This is the six-point conversion, per se, Deshaun Norwood. Add a touchdown to his ledger as Norwood has gone over the century mark in rushing today. 7.27 left in the game. And let me quickly give you the drive summaries. Ooh, wow as uh, the Bears brought in some late substitutions. Uh, they, they're offsides. Too. But, yep. <laughs> <laughs> JR, you know, you, you beat them to the punch. Well, that was, you that know. So let me, let me give you the quick drive summaries here. Bears needed four minutes to begin the half, kicked a field goal. Lancers used five minutes, scored a touchdown. I'm sorry, no, the Lancers punted, and then the Bears used five minutes, scored a touchdown. Lancers used three minutes, and they scored a touchdown. Bears needed a minute. They scored a touchdown, and uh, the Lancers used about three minutes, and they scored a touchdown. So safe to say there hasn't been many punts or many defensive plays in the second half. Not touchdown, touchdown, touchdowns, how we've capped off this one. They need to really kick this one away. Oh, it's, And the it's loose. squib kick is muffed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But another bear came flying in to recover. That's Maje Allen who saves the day for the Bears. Oh, and boy. now the head-scratching squib kick, you see, you, we'll see if it comes back to haunt him. Yeah, that could be an issue here. Bears have great field position again, but it nearly works. I guess it's, a, I guess it's an onside kick. It's just a different way than a you're A different way of typically. doing it, I guess. Yeah. 7.27 left of the ball game. Bears by six. Empty formation for Pauly. Dominguez hit as he throws. His pass is reeled in, but it hit the ground first. Looks like Incomplete it was, to Henderson. Yeah, I think there might have been a partial swat on it. 
Yeah, but as the game goes on, it seems the Lancers are bringing less receivers in the game, but the Bears are bringing more receivers in the game. It shows the different mentality of these two teams. And, you know, in most games, you'd say it's important to have a great quarterback out there to try and balance an offense. But, you know, in high school football, sometimes just running the ball wins games. And the Lancers have had a fantastic second half, all dominated on the ground. Wow, nobody there. Dominguez behind Jack Lua, incomplete. Boy, Lua was not even looking back for that pass, and it was on the turf as well. Two incompletions. And the Bears, with 7.20 left in the game, face third down and 10. Ryan Dominguez, a sophomore quarterback, has shined tonight. We'll see if he has another big throw in him on third down with plenty of football left to be played. It should be noted both teams have all their timeouts. Empty on third and 10. Dominguez is immediately under pressure. And that play wow. didn't stand much of a chance. Wow, wow, wow. Evan Christensen makes the stop, but the play got started on the blitz from Christian Maldonado, the very running back who keyed the touchdown drive. He also keys the third down stop for Lakeside. Boy, this really opens up the door here for the Lancers. And considering how effective Lakeside's been running the ball, and also doing so methodically, well, the Lancers could use a lot of time on this upcoming drive. Yeah, good run back by Williams here, who's back for the Lancers, could really be something that, the, that Lakeside really could utilize right now. So Bears are punting away with the lead, and potentially they might not get the ball back for the rest of the game, considering how Lakeside plays this. Lawrence wow. Williams with a late flag. Well, was I wonder what that flag would well, be. Well, Williams called for the fair catch, but I don't think he returned it. I think he immediately got tackled, yeah. so that might be a bear penalty. Uh, I'm thinking it could be. So this could go against Polly here. So Lakeside has gone hurry up throughout the second half, and we've marveled about how good the Bears have been defensively, but they've got to do it again. Yeah, since they've not been able to effectively throw that football, their, their backs are against the wall even though they're six minutes on the time clock. And they have a six-point lead. So this drive might be for the season. As mentioned, the Pauley Bears are on the bubble. A penalty flag waved off. He might have not waved fair catch emphatically enough. He might have needed I, to I throw a kick in there I, or I, <laughs> add I, a spin. I, it looked pretty obvious to me. I'd say so too. This ought to be an in interesting drive here. So the Lakeside Lancers on the road at King High School. They need to go 87 yards to take the late lead. And as always, they'll begin the drive on the ground. Norwood is spilled by Johnson on the gain of seven. I'm running out of slots here to put the yardage for Norwood. <laughs> Cut back for Norwood, another seven-yard gain wow. and a first down. The tackle from Izzy Morales, his seventh of the game. Well, knowing you, Jr., you might you might need to bring out a book sheet next time we see I, I the Lancers. Think so, or I'm going to have to start bringing out a couple of stat sheets. Third play of the drive, and it's a short run. Norwood is knocked down by Morales. As the Lancers use some clock, five and a half minutes left in regulation. The Lancers have, with Maduro on the blitz, nice. a la Ray Lewis against Sproles to win that game back in 2009. Lewis runs right through the gap and makes the stop. Nice read on the play defensively there for the Bears. This puts up a third and long scenario for the Lancers. Ben Badura, a wonderful two-way athlete for the Bears. Top five in the league in receiving and top three in the league with three interceptions on defense this season. He timed that one perfectly like a Troy Palomalu too. Mm. Morris wraps up Norwood and 
Hawley delivers on defense. They've got a fourth and nine, does the Lancers with 4.48 to go. I think they have to think about, well, I guess they're not. I thought they were gonna think about maybe trying to attempt the fourth down conversion attempt here. Maybe fourth and five, but fourth and nine, they are electing to bring in the punt team. Now, JR, even in his wildest my imaginations, might not think of a fake. Oh, of course I would. Just kidding, of, of course, course you I would. would. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course I would think of a fake punt. We'll see if they got a Pat McAfee back there. It's a punt. It it's wobbles downfield. In fact, it's a good one. Ben Madur from the 38-yard line. He doesn't have all but two players to beat. He's at the 20, cuts it back to the 15. There's Ben Madur, 62 yards on the return. Oh my Touchdown, goodness. Bears. Wow. Oh, my goodness. If the Bears make the playoffs, that might be the run that runs them into the CIF postseason. What that, a return. Yeah, that could seal the deal on this ball game just on that run back. The entire Pauly season might come down to what happened in the last minutes. They needed a stop and got it. They needed a big play to uh, cushion this lead and basically secure the commanding two-score edge. Ben Madura takes matters into his own hands. Hold on a second. <laughs> I think we got a flag. Oh, wow. That changes a whole lot. Don't. Uh, punch those tickets yet to the playoffs folks it's not over yet for the Bears wave off the return off the end of it still a good run back even with the penalty flag yeah because he grabbed out the 48 so they still gained 22 yards on that return now the Lancers need to flex the muscles defensively here right Lakeside comes in runners up for the best scoring defense in the Sun Belt they have all the tools to make a stop. And they also have, does Lakeside, all timeout. three of its timeouts. Wow. The Bears have used their first timeout of the half. Again, has this not been an entertaining evening of football? I'd say it is. Yeah. yeah. So the Pauley Bears were uh, perennial uh, b uh, basement dwellers. Missing the playoffs year after year before John Rice got there. And say what you want about their struggles in the postseason. They're now getting there consistently. They made the quarterfinals last year. Uh, knocked out by Northwood in 2021. And the Bears, albeit a young team that got off to a slow start, they win today. They win in the finale. And you know, they basically clinch a playoff spot. Well, I'll tell you what, you can see the confidence rising as this game just carries on here in spite of the fact that they've had some pretty nasty injuries take place to some of their key players. I'm sure this is some momentum that they'd like to ride into the final week of the season two weeks from tonight. Absolutely. So the Bears don't need to score a touchdown to win the game. If they can effectively chew up the clock with a couple of first downs, then this game could be over. Of course, points would all but seal it with under four minutes to go. Dominguez scans, fakes, throws. The pass is partially deflected to the line of scrimmage. Ethan Gonzalez, the senior defensive end, knocks it away. And this, this, uh, the, these fans are cheering to run the ball here. And I'd say the Bears better be very careful. If they don't pick up a first down, then they're going to be leaning on that kicker to make another long one to uh, extend the lead here. Yeah, I think running the football is what you need to do at this point to try to chew up some time off the clock. They bring in two tight ends. Does the Bears on second down. Here's Tejon Henderson. He squirts through a hole. It's a good idea to get him involved. Wow. Tejon Henderson <laughs> scores again. Four touchdowns for Henderson tonight. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. He makes it look so effortlessly, too. He, he does. And as mentioned, if the Bears make the playoffs this season, the performance of Henderson in the second half of this game and everything Paulie did when they were back against the wall, that two-minute stretch with the defensive stop and then this drive with the Henderson touchdown, 
that might have just run that into the postseason. Well, in my official, unofficial stats here, Tajon Henderson, 141 yards on eight carries. On eight? On eight carries. He's chewed up a lot of turf on a few of his runs here. My unofficial official calculator says that's 17 and a half yards a run, yeah, including 29 on this play. It's been quite a night. you got to also add to the fact that he's about 100 yards in receptions as well. So Tajon Henderson in an absolutely ridiculous stat line tonight. You know, it's so amazing because it doesn't look like he's running fast, but not only is he scoring touchdowns, but the Lancers can't even seem to touch him. You know, that's how, how, how quick and twitchy and fast he is. There's Lawrence Williams. If the Lancers are to win this game or get back into it, I'd, I'd say Lawrence Williams might have a fingerprint on this comeback try. He already has a 65-yard return and a 47-yard kickoff return. So they just avoid kicking it to him. Reeled in by the up man, and he's going backwards. <laughs> One of the up men was not expecting that, yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> Running that was, for his life. That was the moment for up man Zane Lewis, and that will go down as a negative return. Yeah, he was unfortunately and going the wrong direction. And I'd direction. say that is an example of why coaches say, just go down. <laughs> just go down. Don't, <laughs> don't be the hero there's only at this one, point. There's only one Dante yeah. Hall. Don't, don't do that. Don't be a hero. But talk about hurry up mode. Uh, the Lancers have got to make something happen. Now is the time they might have to throw this football. They have zero passing yards. Does Lakeside tonight. Got all three of their timeouts left. Norwood gains six. Second stop of the game for Magana. Norwood powers his way to the 45-yard line. That's the sort of physical running that I'm sure the Bears will feel on Saturday. Number 27, Deshaun Norwood, tackled by number 33, Paul Robles. And that pass is behind intended target Angelo Maris, incomplete. Only the third attempt on the night for the Lancers. So Rene Maldonado is completing 48% of his throws this year, but as mentioned, zero for three in completions tonight. Well, not too often a defense can go an entire game without allowing a single passing yard. <laughs> That's the case tonight for the Bears. Goal line package. Lancers are running the ball with three minutes left down by two scores. Norwood is spilled by Luna, the sophomore. That's about a first down. They'll mark him inches short. Norwood squirts through to the 30 and is up at the 29. Madure makes the stop. His seventh tackle. 37 stops, two for loss, and three interceptions this year for safety, Ben Madur. Maldonado to the 25, hammered by Morris at the 22. Oh, got a flag. False start on the offense. Yeah. 240 yeah. left in the game, 36-21. It's the Bears by 15. Boy, they have such a great ability to push with their offensive line. Wait a minute. Score should be 30, 34 to 20, 21. I think the scorekeeper might might need a quick refresher because Pauly had 27 before they scored that touchdown. There's no way they scored nine on, on that touchdown. Well, we are getting close to Christmas time. So. This should be 34. It's not. Yeah. This ain't on Riverside TV. This is on whoever's manning the scoreboard. <laughs> Maldonado's dropped by Morris. All right, time clock is a definite factor here. Yeah. Glad you're with us on Riverside TV. Fan voted game, Lakeside and Pauly. Maldonado will take matters in his own hands. Morris meets him in the backfield, and he is spilled for a loss. Back at the 32-yard line. Number 
four, Rene Maldonado. The Bears, Tackle Paul Robles. LeSean Johnson. And LeSean Johnson. Yeah, there's no quitting these Lancers, that's for sure. Yeah. They're definitely trying to get it into the end zone before that time expires. Goal line package, Rene Maldonado on third and 15. How often, JR, have you seen a quarterback sneak on a third and 15? It is a little different number four, on the Maldonado play calling. By number 54, Nate Parga. So we've got a timeout Jay called by Lakeside with 157 left. Yeah, they had a, they had their full th or had their full three timeouts still available. When they're down to less than two minutes, why not start uh, somehow managing the clock? But boy, this is almost a little too little too late at this point. Yeah, for sure. So for those of you, you know, uh, just joining us, Paulie, who should be up 34 to 21, is up 36. We're just being a little generous. Uh, to 21. You know, the Bears are good, but I don't know if they're 36 <laughs> points good. But uh, tonight, Pauly really, really amazed me. Uh, they come in against a team that, admittedly, we are the fairest show, Riverside TV, so we don't, we don't like to sugarcoat it. Lakeside had the better numbers. Lakeside yeah. looked like the better team. It they had did. the better record. On, on paper, yes. You know, they come in favorites, and Pauly takes care of business tonight. Uh, this was a playoff type of performance for the Bears, and I got to say, you know, John Rice has got a team that is doing exactly what he said he wanted to do before the year, peak of the right time. Maldonado still looking for his first completion, and he got it. Down to the 12 for the spinning and the diving Kenneth Paul. There is a flag, though. Don't ruin the first completion of the night for Renee Maldonado. Another flag has been thrown late. Great, great uh, crowd coming in tonight, too. Uh, this is an opportunity before some of them leave for the exits. Thank you for all of the supporters tonight to come out there. Uh, Jack Luna, it appeared his parents were standing right next to us oh, uh, for the okay. game. So uh, excellent, great two-way sophomore uh, Jack Luna. We'll be hearing his name for years and years to come. Kind of wish I clapped the, the guy's hands when he was right here. Nevertheless, uh, great, great crowd tonight. All the fans filing in the seats to root on the Bears. Yeah, this is, Bears. This is a home game, yep. essentially, for a Riverside Bowling. Of course, we, we raised the question, okay. ho ho hoping not to cause controversy here. But when you have a high school that's been around for over 100 years. 100? Woo! When can we get a stadium for these kids? Nah. That's, they need I'm, another I'm 100 years. asking that it's, question. It's too soon, I'm JR. not blaming <laughs> anybody. <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers. You know what's funny I'm about how you say you're not pointing fingers? You're, you're literally pointing fingers <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, man. Maldonado is taken down. Micah Aaron comes flying in for the Pauly Sack. Wow. I tell you what, just look at the enthusiasm of the Bears here. I mean, this is really a shot in the arm for them at the right time of the season to make it happen. It's the first sack of the game from the Bears. That's Micah Aaron who comes flying in. The senior's first sack of the season, and that might be the dagger. So with 147 left in the game, Lakeside has two timeouts. Unless they can create a turnover here, uh, the Bears can run out the clock and win the game right now. Score on tomorrow will probably be 34-21. First down from the 45. Henderson, he already has four touchdowns and over 200 oh, yards tonight. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, this guy's a cheat code in a video game. 20-yard oh, scamper and a first goodness. down. Unbelievable. I really want to see your numbers at the end of the game for Tejon Henderson. I, I really do. I mean, I'm showing him over 160-plus yards here. And that's rushing. And that's then he's got rushing. receiving. So just rushing. Uh, I'd say he earns uh, game ball tonight. Oh, I, absolutely. And it's it's just been a combination of him. Dominguez has done a great job of managing this game offensively, too. 127 on a running clock. Henderson, I mean, he's the tireless, ageless wonder. He's back in there still. He's got sights on five. Number five, Tejon Henderson. Could this be his fifth touchdown of the game? 
He's dropped to the 20. The tackle from the Lancers, number sophomore five, Isaac two, Hernandez. Five, Hernandez. Tackle by number 32, Isaac Hernandez. Second tackle of the game, 31st of the season. So I'm already up to 171 here. 171 on how many carries? That, that is on only 10 carries. Wow. I might have missed one or two, but That's I'm, okay. just, I'm just, you know. And then how much in the receiving game? Receiving in, let's see here. Let me. In the first half, he had four for 85. Yeah, we're up to just shy. We're at 99 yards receiving wise. Okay, on how many? Uh, on six? On actually five receptions. Okay. All right. Let's get the math for the player of the game as, as the final seconds tick off the clock here. Final numbers for Tejon Henderson. Wow. Of course, 10 grabs oh, or, or 10 runs for 171 yards and three touchdowns, five grabs for 99 in the score. So 15 touches. Yes. 270 yards yes. on 15 touches right. and four touchdowns. That Is he the player of the game? I, by far. I mean, there's okay. such you know great play we've seen from the Bears tonight, but Henderson, when he needed to shine the most, comes up with this big contribution to a very big win here for the Poly Bears. Every time he touched the ball, great things happen to the tune of 18 yards per touch. And that's pretty good. That's incredible. Kudos to the Bears offensive front for paving the way for Pauly throughout Tejon Henderson's legendary day. The Bears knock out the Lancers by two scores. The final score as listed here is 36-21, but as the folks and the statisticians look over the film, they might decide it's 34-21. We'll see how it goes. Nevertheless, Bears 36, Lancers 21 as of right now. Player of the game. Tejon Henderson. Absolutely. There's no question about that. Let's check out the play of the day for Henderson. It was a simple cutback run for him, and he is so slippery, so quick, he jumps right past everybody in route for the score. This was his fourth and final touchdown of the game from 29 yards. 36-21, the final here from Pauley. The Bears improved to 4-5, and 2-1 and in the Sun Belt. Lancers dropped their Sunbelt opener to now 3-5 and five this year with a visit to Vista Del Lago on the way this coming Thursday. Final thoughts, JR? Yeah, you know, this was a very key, crucial win for the Bears. Looking at trying to position themselves at a run at CIF, it comes at a very crucial time of the season for them. But the whole issue with injuries hopefully will not be something that holds them back for their final game of the season here. Yeah. Well, very much needed by will give them an opportunity to heal in preparation for the season finale. Make sure to join us tomorrow, by the way. Riverside TV features Fontana and uh, Fohai, Fohai, according to uh, JR, yes. and the Titans of Notre Dame. That's coming up tomorrow afternoon right here on Riverside TV. For the rest of our excellent crew, I'm Nick Rice. That's JR Ibarra. Good night from King High School where the Bears – with their fourth win, might have just jumped into the playoff conversation with a 36-21 victory over Lakeside. Good night. Good night, everybody.